Okay, so we're continuing through the architecture development iteration, and we've just finished looking at the business architecture phase, where we produced a draft business architecture requirement specification, or business architecture specification. And one of the models that went into there was a business anchor model. Um, we're now going to be looking at uh, the information systems architecture, which consists of sort of two domains, which is an application domain and a data domain. All right, so as we come into the information systems architecture, this is kind of like where the rubber hits the road within the architecture discipline, because what you're doing is you're bringing together the business pieces and you're trying to understand what technology pieces could fit in. Now, it's important to just highlight at this point that depending on what industry you're in, uh, technology can be interpreted in different ways. So for example, if you're doing an architecture for a defense industry, something like gunpowder is actually considered to be technology. All right, so just be aware that when I, uh, I refer to the term technology, uh, it, it can uh, constitute other, other disciplines. But for our example that we're going to be working through today, it's in some of the traditional sense, which is IT-related aspects. And what I want to do is I want to bring these two worlds together. All right, so we're, we're in the information systems architecture space. And one of the, it, out of the two domains of data and application, I want to just tackle the data architecture space first. Now, remember that ultimately, at the end of this exercise, um, since we're following a techn technology focus here, we want to be able to produce a piece of technology. And ultimately, when it comes to data, you want to produce a database. And that database must contain certain information. Now, within the database world, those things are referred to as tables. Right? So for example, if I want to store information about my customer, well, I'm going to build a customer database, all right? a customer table within my database, let me rather reiterate. Well, let's say that, that that customer has to store information about what products that customer has acquired. Well, similarly over here, I need a table which talks about products. Right? So really, this is what happens in, inside the databases. All the databases throughout the world that store information about you and your social networks, all of those things, they store it in these things called tables inside a database. And the tables are defined according to these concepts. Now, these concepts are things, right? And we often refer to those as nouns within, an organ uh, within this exercise. But they're things that you can sort of touch and feel. Right? And they could be products and those types of aspects. But you know, really, this is the, the, the things that you want to store information about within your organization. So if that's the goal, how do I kind of move back from there to be able to achieve that? So really, sitting on this side of the sandwich, we have the capability which we had coming out of the business architecture phase. Right? Now remember that that capability consisted of people, process, and tools. But what I want to focus on here is specifically the process space. Now an interesting piece here, and this will also occur within your business architecture space, is you look at aspects of um, what the business does as well as how the business does it. Right? In other words, we have process, which is how I do it. Remember my coffee example way back in module one? Right? And then we had function, right? and that is what the business does. Right, so when I say what the business does, well, it might do. Um, there might be a function there called uh, manage logistics, or manage customer. Let's stick to our example: manage customer and the products that they buy. So let's call it manage customer. Um, and now there might be a process. Well, the process of how I manage customer is quite different. You know, and I might uh, you know get in touch with them. There's details that I need to ask about them. There are various rules that I want to uh, invoke as I interact with them. So when I talk about process, I'm talking about flow and and events and rules and decisions and those types of things that I need to make. And when I'm talking about function, I'm talking about just a basic building block. What do we do? We manage a customer. All right, and that's why this function is a nice sort of piece that sits at the bottom here. So let's say. Here is one called Manage Customer. So this tells me one of the things that my business does when I refer to what a business does. So you can see Manage Customer, and there's a process that maybe strings together a variety of pieces that come from it. Well, let's have a look. Maybe it's Manage Product. We've got two tables there. So let's look at Manage Product as well. So here's a Manage Product. So we've got sort of two functions that sit here. And they could be strung together with a process which says, customers ordering a new product. Right? So you can kind of see customer orders new product. In order for customer to order a new product, there's two functional building blocks we need to look at, manage customer and manage product. Now, these concepts are business concepts. And you can see they're made up of two terms, a verb and a noun. The verb is the action piece. And the noun is the thing. This is the thing that sits within that statement. And within the data architecture world, that thing helps us identify what that table should be in the database. It is 
the architecture term referred to as an entity. In other words, an entity that makes up a table in a database. So this helps me identify, ah, I need a customer table in my database. And this one here helps me identify, ah, I need a product table within my database. And that then is the start of your data architecture. There are other disciplines around, well, what is the relationship between customer and product and how to rationalize all of those entities and all the rest of it. But that's, that's a detail for a slightly more advanced level. But basically what you've got now is a linkage between capability, between my processes and my function, and ultimately between my data. Now we take those data bits and we start to build an application landscape from that. All right, but um, before we move to the application architecture space, just a reminder that the output coming from the data architecture is a data architecture specification document. And in that document, it'll talk about these concepts, defining your data entities, the inputs and outputs, some of the control structures that sit on top of them. It'll also look at a sort of a general data or entity reference model, and also a logical data model, um, which you, you've got as part of your resources and as an example. Um, and that really looks at similar as we've spoken about previously, logical data model, and you can overlay stuff in it. You can overlay um, current state, future state. You can overlay pain points, where strategic investment is occurring. It too can be used as one of the city-style models um, to help you overlay different types of views that would sit on top of it. So that's really sort of the end of the data architecture phase, and those are the outputs that you, you can expect to give back to your stakeholders.